All right, in this module, we're gonna look at another of the plastic uh, properties of a material, and that is known as the tensile strength. So we've just finished talking about the yield point or where plastic deformation begins. Um, tensile strength um, also kind of denotes another uh, portion of the stress strain behavior. So let's start with elastic again. So during elastic deformation, our reduced section of the tensile sample, the dog bone, um, has a uniform cross-sectional area. So everything in here has the same diameter is basically what that's uh, saying. Um, when it becomes plastic, um, initially during plastic deformation, the cross-section of the reduced section is uniform. So you can see here, I kind of just reduce the diameter, but it's uniform throughout the whole thing. So it has a uniform cross-sectional area. However, at the tensile, at the value of the tensile strength, we start to see this condition go away. So at that point, it no longer has um, a uniform cross-sectional area. So let's kind of re, let's look at that again. So Here's our stress strain plot, engineering stress strain. So you see initially it goes up linearly, and you see here around here it's the yield strength. And so it it, uh, it deviates from the linear behavior. And so in both of those cases, in elastic it's uniform, and then plastic it's uniform, until we get to the maximum. So this maximum point M here, this is defined as the tensile strength because the maximum on the curve is the absolute maximum strength or stress value that the material can handle. So the material can only handle that much, but it's already after it's plastically deformed or changed shapes. So that's how we define tensile strength or TS. Sometimes you may see this as ultimate tensile stress, UTS but it's all the same thing. It's the tensile strength. It's the maximum on the stress strain curve. And the significance of this physically is that after this point, um, the what happens is there's a region of the reduced section that actually what we call necks. It forms an even smaller cross-sectional area and it becomes a stress concentrator. And so that means that the overall stress value actually goes down. So the, the presence of this uh, at the maximum and then after that, uh, what we see is necking occur. So this, you can see it's uniform here and now it's non-uniform because we have this necked or even further reduction in the cross-sectional area that's localized to a specific point. And it will continue this way until it fractures. And so the neck will continue to get smaller and smaller uh, until it fractures at this point F. So that's what this tensile strength is. It denotes uh, noticeable necking occurs. Uh, and this is for metals. Uh, when you have this point, it means that we have necking occurring. So the interesting thing um, is that necking occurs uh, in metals at the tensile strength. The ons that corresponds to the onset. And again, it's this localized difference um, in the reduction or in the cross-sectional area, so it's no longer uniform. Uh, so it uh, exhibits this necking. Polymers uh, exhibit a similar but not the same phenomenon. Uh, in polymers, which we'll talk about in more detail uh, uh, in the polymer section, um, they exhibit this non-uniform, but that non-uniform region actually continues to grow and grow. And so the mechanism, what's behind the sort of necking phenomenon uh, is different in polymers. And so we're gonna talk about that um, in a different topic, in the polymers topic, because it's uh, such a different mechanism behind what's occurring here with, um, with necking for metals.